thank you very much. So, okay, we will move to the next talk. Um, I would say it's a very important talk from the artistic crew uh, because uh, Mehdi Shushan is going to, to introduce uh, the latest version of the Innovo app, which is a very important uh, app, and very important software, homemade software that we develop in artistic project, which allows actually uh, meshing the electrostructures that are being predicted from the manufacturing simulations as the ones that, that Theo was showing in the first talk. And uh, it's very important to highlight also that this software becomes today available uh, in the internet for free use by everyone, okay? Using an internet browser and in particular, I mean, through the, the web page of the, of the artistic project. So Mehdi, the floor is yours. Okay, so good afternoon, everyone. Can you hear me well, yeah? Yes, fantastic. Perfect. So yeah, my talk today will be entitled uh, mainly based around this uh, artistic tool that we, we built, which is called Innov. And I will try to show some uh, application and how it works overall. So at first, a quick uh, introduction. So uh, as Alejandro mentioned, I'm a last year PhD student at the LRCS in uh, France. And during my uh, student time, I had the chance to uh, do um, an internship with Dr. Kyung Kei in England, followed the next year by an internship in this very same lab, where then Professor Alejandro Franco uh, suggested me to pursue my uh, academic career in, into a PhD. So within the artistic project, so like you, I think you have a clear overview of what we're doing, but my part in this project, which goes from the experimental to the uh, specific capacity and performances, my, pro my task is mainly around continuum modeling, although I've been a bit involved in experimental uh, testings, but I will be mainly talking about modeling in this talk. So here is the outline, the outline of what we're going through today. So first, a bit of context around what's 3D structure and uh, what's the role of the mesh, maybe a world that not all of you are familiar with. So we try to explain the best as I can. Then we will go through what's Innov and how it can help uh, people unfamiliar with uh, modeling to get started. Then I will try to do a live demonstration, hopefully uh, without any problems, of this coupling between uh, Innov and uh, Comsolmity Physics, so commercial software into which we are performing our physical simulations. And depending on time, I will go through a couple of examples to highlight how you can use this uh, coupling. And finally, some Q&A time. So at first, let's have a look at what's the system we are interested in. So maybe all of you know that this hard cell configuration is what we study the most in modeling. So it's composed further of, of active material, which we store and provide the lithium. Then you have the carbon binder domain, which will be your percolating network for your electrons. Then the electrolyte, in our case liquid, that will provide a conductive media for the uh, lithium ion. And finally, the separator, which will prevent a contact and then a shortcut between your two electrodes. So first, let's see how we could obtain 3D structure from a uh, 2 model. So you have different pathways, obviously. First one being through the experimental point of view. You could do some tomography, so either a micro CT, where must be um, where you should not have access to CBD, but then you will have to stochastically add CBD later on, or directly through nano CT, where you should be able to resolve the two different phases, and then directly use it in a 3D model. Or you have the uh, in silico approach, meaning you will generate computation with a comp with a computer your own. Um, structure. So it will be either through stochastic generation, which is the most uh, widespread because it's the easiest to implement, or through what we are doing in the artistic project, through manufacturing simulation, which we'll, uh, which Theo had uh, explained earlier. So at first, let's explore the tomography aspect. So it, just a quick overview of the history between tomography and uh, modeling. So the first electrotomogram was performed in 2010 by uh, Paul Schering, who will actually give a talk, I think, tomorrow in the artistic webinar. It was quickly followed by the first positive electrotomogram 
by a German group next year. And from this data, which were open access, another group was able to, for the first time, report a 3D model directly based on tomography data. So it was quite a huge leap behind, uh, in front, sorry. But we will have to wait several years to witness any significant improvement in this uh, COPOL tomography and modeling uh, timeline with, for the first time, through uh, tomography data, being able to simulate in a 3D model your carbon binary domain with its actual microstructure, meaning you could actually see the pores inside your structure instead of assuming um, an average tortuosity or porosity. And the very same year, there was a new uh, publication from the uh, Sam Cooper team, which reported for the first time a machine learning algorithm able to really reproduce with a high fidelity data and with a really high, uh, at a high scale, way larger than what you could get from uh, tomography. However, this approach based on tomography, it's not so straightforward because it's a quite a long process and sometimes due to this uh, difference of contrast between the uh, light phases like uh, your carbon in your binder and your ultimate material, you might run into some issues during the segmentation step. So that's why we'll see that there is other, um, other pathways, approaches that uh, we can uh, choose. So the first one is the most widespread because it's the easiest one, is the uh, stochastic generation. So in a sense, stochastic means random. And there was recently a nice paper which really illustrates well this idea of randomness. So from tomography data, they just selected three different uh, particles. And what, what they did to build their stochastic structure, they just choose a box. And one by one, they were dropping each particle. And then based on the collision with the other already existing particles, they will reach their final uh, positions within the the, um, the box, and they will continue to do so until you reach your desired amount of active material. However, it is a bit out of the box simulation uh, approach. Most of the time for stochastic generation, what we use is rather uh, spherical, for because it's easier, spherical active material, just like in this work, where you have in red your active material, and in green, your carbon binder domain. So what they did is they just generate firstly your um, active material as spheres, and then they can play with the how the CBD will be distributed in between the active material particles, either as a film or as clusters, so forming aggregates. And you can obviously get different results out of that. Then lastly, the last um, one of the last approach I mentioned was the machine learning, which in recent years has really been uh, on the rise. So this is also from the paper of the team of uh, Sam Cooper, where from a training set based on real life tomography data, they could reproduce almost identically, I mean, with a high level of fidelity, uh, stochastic images in a fraction of a second. It's not worthy that this machine learning approach, once you have uh, train algorithm, it can be really fast and it's one of the main advantages of this uh, approach. And the, the other one being that it allows you to have, like I said earlier, much larger data sets than you will get of with uh, tomography because you, you are not restricted by your field of view because it does not exist field of view in machine learning. So you can really create really large data set. Then how to model large data sets is another problem, but it allows you to more flexibility. And yeah, finally, the approach we are doing in the artistic project, so based on coarse grain molecular dynamics, which is then allows us to really screen and capture the impact of each manufacturing parameters on the uh, output mesostructure. And then my, my role is to characterize it in terms of uh, electrochemical performance. So now that we have our 3D uh, structure, let's see what we need to get results. So obviously we will need a 3D model, which can act as a pilot. Obviously your car here will be a 3D structure. 
However, you need something to connect between the two for the pilot to give order to the car. And in this case, it will be through what we call the mesh, which will really be the link between the two. So let's see what's the idea behind having a mesh. Well, why don't we just simulate all, everything at once? So if, we, if you were to simulate and trying to resolve all your equations in all your system at once, it will be way too much uh, computationally expensive for your computer. That's why people came out with, the, uh, with this idea to divide your system into sub-volumes and then solve in these individual sub-volumes your, your equations which is much uh, more way much less strain on your computer let's say it allows you to run expensive simulations on complex system but then what's inside your mesh most of the time it will be then trying to describe to describe your system into sub volumes like i showed in the slide before in, t in most of the cases it will be through uh, tetrahedrons for the uh, volume and as triangle for the surface. So here I have an example here of a surfacing mesh where you have your fine triangle tri which uh, segments and divide all your images. And here an example of your elements in 3D. Also a little video. Okay, it's one chance out of two that it was going to lag, it lag a bit. But it's right, you can see the uh, mesh of a uh, half cell electrode generated with uh, our algorithm with in red your ultimate material, in yellow your common binder domain, in blue your separator, and in black your electrolyte. But why is it so complicated to have until recent years carbon binder and active material inside the same simulation? To, to explain that, I like to take a little uh, example and compare meshing to painting. Let's, let's imagine you would like to try to paint a man standing next to a mountain. So here you have your mountain, here you have your man. If you were to take a really fine paintbrush, you would have your little man which has all the details, or most of the detail you want to, but your mountain will have way too, way too much um, detail and it will take forever for you to paint and finish this drawing. But if you were to take the opposite approach, to choose a wide paintbrush. This time you'll get the uh, appropriate amount of detail in your mountain, but your man will be almost not recognizable. And that really highlights the issue when you are dealing with different uh, order of size, order of magnitude, because your active material and your carbon binder domain are, have not the same um, magnitude in size. And that's why it's really tricky to implement both of them in the same mesh and that was really a break to the development of accurate 3D models. If we keep a bit with the comparison with meshing, uh, with the painting, sorry. Let's say in painting you have a model you want to paint. You can have different approaches, so different styles, for instance, realistic or cubist. It's the same with uh, modeling. In the mesh, you start with a sphere. Uh, with a sphere. If you have a fine mesh, you will end up with something that looks like the original model. But if you have, for instance, wrong parameters, you will end up with a mesh which is too coarse. And then you have something that looks like more cubist style. That really shows that starting from the very same um, input, through the meshing step, you can introduce errors. Errors through, the, through for instance, the volume changes, surface, or even the shape of your antimaterial particle that can really impact your electrochemical results or any kind of uh, physical simulations you will perform based on this mesh. And that's where our comparison with painting stops because while it's more up to taste for paintings, for modeling, we will always prefer the realistic approach because it's the one closer to uh, reality. So where does uh, Innov stand in this, uh, in this process of modeling, what can it bring to the table? I would like firstly to uh, have a word about the, what we showed last year during our last uh, webinar series of 2020. I uh, showed back then the first uh, version of Innov, 
which was allowing the import, which allowed the importation of uh, 3D structure, so either as a manufacturing um, output, so as a list of spheres, as a matrix, or as images. And from there, you could generate your mesh. But as I said, it was only allowing the importation. So let's see now what's the uh, new version of Innov. So this is the workflow of the old version, only allowing you to import from tomography data or from uh, manufacturing simulations, so as a collection of spheres, and then to generate your volumetric mesh. But now we have also included stochastic generation. So you can even come without any, any input and generate all at once the structure and the mesh inside Innov. So here it is the workflow for the importation. So you will start with your, if you start with manufacturing simulations, you will have your X, Y, and Z and radius lists for all your spheres that will convert, that will be converted into slices of images in Innov and then into a volumetric mesh. Or you can start with uh, tomography data, so start it from uh, unsegmented data, then through this uh, Fiji or any kind of software you prefer, you can generate the segmentation process, having allowing you to have these uh, segmented images, and from there feed the Innov algorithm, which will then create in turn the volumetric mesh. So as for the stochastic generation, I put here on these uh, flow charts, but don't pay too much attention to those. The main take home message is that through this uh, stochastic generation algorithm, what you can control is the um, active material, active material overlap, meaning the amount of volume uh, shared by two active material particles. Then also you can have a fine control over um, particle size distribution that I will show you uh, on the actual graphic user interface later. And finally, you have a control on the morphology of carbon binder if you want more to have a film or um, more like a cluster-like carbon binder domain. So let's have a look at what we can get from this stochastic algorithm. So like I said earlier, you can control the uh, morphology of a carbon binder. So in here you have the uh, active material in green, the electrolyte in purple, and the carbon binder in uh, yellow. So as you can see, if you choose film-like carbon binder, you really, you, you really have carbon binder that really covers all your particles, depending on the amount also that you choose. Here, see there is partial coverage, but because there is not enough carbon binder to cover everything. But you can also choose with the same active material structure to have something like uh, agg agglomerate, which will leave much more active, mat active um, surface area on your particles, and also tends to have like uh, clusters of carbon binder domain. You could also try to do somehow simulate the calendaring effect, meaning in an uncalendered electrode, you will usually get, have more uh, porosity and less or maybe more distance between your active material particles. And as you calendar, you will reduce your um, porosity and also bring closer your active material particles. So through this uh, um, sorry, stochastic generation algorithm, you can really control these two aspects and somehow mimic the uh, calendaring effect on uh, electrodes. Now that we have the workflow for the importation and generation of structure. Let's see how the meshing is actually performed. So, like I said, the inputs are segmented binary images, whether it's imported or generated. And from there, you will apply what is called voxelization. So I try to walk, through, walk you through this uh, process. So at first, you will do what we call the node generation. So you start with your image. Each pixel will be a node. So you have your slices of uh, your stack of images. You will have each pixel as a node. And from two consecutive uh, slices, you will build what we call a voxel. So it's a 3D pixel out of eight nodes. So eight pixels will be connected to form a voxel. Then you will generate your element. So the element is just the tetrahedrons in your system 
So to do so, you will just divide your voxel into tetrahedrons. However, as you can see, let's take, for instance, the example of this one, so which is consists of these two blue nodes, this red one and this black one. As you can see, all the nodes, they don't belong to the same color, meaning it's not the same material inside these uh, tetrahedrons. So you, you will need to further divide these specific tetrahedrons until all the nodes are from the same uh, material. And to do so, it's the segmentation case where you will uh, identify how much more you need to divide each tetrahedrons. And then the actual segmentation case where you will actually divide your tetrahedrons. And here's this little video of a few different uh, voxels which are divided in differently. Here you can see a really high amount of tetrahedrons, meaning it's uh, divided into a lot of tetrahedrons, whereas some later ones will be uh, almost not divided at all. You can really see how it's really here, this one is almost not divided at all, just the uh, five initial ones, meaning they were already sh sharing the same uh, domain at, as the nodes. So this is a bit uh, technical, uh, boring modeling stuff about meshing, but the overall picture of Inov is rather to work you through these two different steps, so electrode generation or importation and meshing, to help you to go quicker to these uh, actual simulations. So in our group, we are mainly using console multiphysics for simulations. So this tool was built uh, in the first place to answer to this uh, problem of ours, to directly have the link between the two. But it's now uh, available and usable for any kind of um, commercial software or open source ones. And what we wanted to do here is really to be able to generate electrode or use the ones from uh, manufacturing simulations, perform the meshing, and from there directly import into console to perform different uh, simulations. For instance, here are different series, and then to analyze different observables. Here is the uh, state of lithiation represented with your carbon binder in the uh, green. So now the uh, tricky part, I will try to do a live presentation of uh, this tool that's, that is now available to everyone. So you should firstly go to this uh, artistic website under the uh, onlet caption, cap, uh, computational uh, portal. Uh, obviously, if you do not have a password or login, you should register first. Then under software, you will have a link here for Inov, just by clicking here. And then you will access to this uh, page with Inov, so the actual uh, graphic user interface. I should mention that you will have two different uh, logins and passwords, one for the computational portal and one for the uh, for the uh, enough to access to this uh, app web page. So here is the uh, graphic user interface of this app. The first uh, first version of it. What I wanted to what I wanted to have for this first version is everything accessible in one page without any tabs or what or whatever. Just having all the information possible in your screen. So I will just quickly highlight the former the. Um, the functionalities that were present previously, so the importation one. For instance, if you would like to import a structure from manufacturing simulations, you could select So this is just importing, so the text file here is just a list of coordinates and radius of your sphere. So here I put for time sake a really low resolution here. I put a resolution of one micrometer per pixels just for because it, otherwise it will take a bit too long for this uh, presentation. But you can see here the structure that you can view in different angles. Also go through automatically through the thickness or x and y uh, directions. If you were to import or to choose a finer resolution 
here I have one saved as a matrix. You will see that we really get these uh, spheres um, aspect, whereas here for the carbon bank domain, for instance, it was looking more like a continuum phase, and you had some weird uh, result for the uh, active material, which is only based because of the resolution. If you import much, uh, if you have a much finer resolution, you will get something like looking like that. So as, as again, with your active material in green, binder in uh, carbon binder in yellow, and the rest will be a void or electrolyte. You could also import, obviously, uh, images if you want to import data from tomography, which has to be already segmented. Come enough is not during the actual segmentation, but you have many tools for that, like uh, Fiji, in, uh, like I mentioned before. And obviously, as you import images, okay, here it's really a thin slice. That's why under this view, it looks like that. And as these images is a bit uh, heavy, it takes some time to go through different uh, to different visualization plan. But like I was saying, if you import images for enough to know what's the active material and what's the uh, actual CBD or void, you should mention it, because there is no way I could know that in your images you will segment the active material as, for instance, with the ID 2 or the ID 1000. So you should here go saying, OK, my active material in my image is purple. My carbon binder here is green, and my void will be purple. Uh, no, sorry, yellow. Uh, finalize. Obviously, here it might look a bit uh, buzzy, this, uh, this graphics interface, but I put documentation. If you are lost at some point or if you want further, um, further information, which will directly link to this uh, PDF file. So, okay, here you have your, um, your 3D. Uh, you can import your 3D electrodes, but what about the generation of structure? Because it's a new feature in Innov. So we start by just clicking on this stuff and then explain because it takes some time to generate. So here I've built, I've made accessible built-in examples. We just have to click and it will automatically generate and mesh different uh, configurations of electrodes. So this one, it's a half cell electrode. So it will autom automatically generate an NMC half cell electrode and do the mesh. You have also a full cell configuration and uh, also the state batteries, so the uh, electrodes, so the, every, the only thing that changes is that we'll introduce, instead of uh, having three, phase, th three phases, so the active material, the binder, and your um, elect electrolyte, you'll have also the void inside, because if you don't have 100% compactness, you will have some uh, void within your electrode. So as you can see, I mentioned that I was generating an NMC electrode, and here you have the actual NMC distribution of your particle size. And as you can see, generated your active material uh, and carbon binder domain, and also your mesh. So it is easy here to render the uh, 3D results of your mesh. Here you can see that it generated quite fastly, so yeah, under one minute, your mesh and uh, electrode. But as you might notice, it's less than 400,000 elements. So it might be a bit too coarse for your taste. So obviously, you can always try to refine it. So here, obviously, everything is explained. If you are lost, you can just put your mouse on the uh, parameter, and it will have a little uh, tooltip to explain what's the goal of this uh, parameter. And obviously, in the documentation, you have some uh, recommendation for each parameter, each value, and how to choose the right, or the right one. But I try to automatize everything. So if you generate an electrode or import one, it will automatically uh, generate suggested values you can start with, and then start to uh, refine a bit by yourself. But I try to put everything that's not straightforward to put at least one suggested value for you to start and have a, a look. So here is our refined mesh, which is 
800,000 elements. So now I will save it. Obviously, it takes some time because of the rendering. Because as you have heavy meshes, the rendering is quite uh, computationally expensive, so it takes some time. So I advise also to clear the figure when you are done with checking uh, your mesh. So like I mentioned, we started for uh, this tool for Inov and Comsol. So you have obviously the uh, native format of Comsol. But here, I will choose the uh, Nastran format, which is something that should be recognizable by most of commercial and uh, open source software. So let's call it artistic. So here, the, the strength of this tool is really that you do not need any license, any, anything for this generation of mesh and electrode. Then for the modelization, the actual modeling, you need something else. But here, you only need internet browser and internet connection. So obviously, the speed of your um, other process for this, for instance, uh, downloading and, and other stuff will be depending on your internet connection. But it really allows to anyone to have access to the tool we've been working with for the past uh, three years in this uh, artistic uh, project. So here I have my uh, I have my mesh. So now let's go into console. So I have already built in my model. I will go through it a bit later. So artistic, the one we just generated. I will import the mesh. So here. The simulation, it's a really simple one, once again, for time sake. It, I will just uh, assign a given value to the uh, electrolyte concentration at the top of my electrode. And I will just slowly let this um, concentration and ions diffuse through the uh, thickness of the electrode. So the importation proce process should be uh, quite fast, even though it's almost one million elements this mesh and then during the, act, the actual computation of the uh, model I will go back I will switch back to enough to show you a bit more of the graphics user interface but this step shouldn't take too long Okay. Or if it does, I might. No, okay. I just had to say it. So, like I was saying before, when you were importing images, you needed you needed to say what was the color of your face, of your ultimate material and electrolyte. It's exactly the same when you import your mesh. Enough uh, console cannot know what's your ultimate material inside the mesh you just imported. So you need to say what's the identification of your ultimate material. So all this information are within the documentation, so you don't need to worry. And if you use the uh, built-in uh, native format of console, it will be also coming with uh, names, your selections. So we have ultimate material domains and, uh, and so on to make it easier for you to make this step. But it's really the only step we need to do before launching your simulation. Well, Okay, now we are ready. During the computation, like I said, I will go switch back to uh, the actual graphics user interface to work through the different uh, aspects. So like I said before, you have these three different built-in examples with the half cell, full cell, and uh, also the state battery. But you can also tune by yourself the uh, and create your own electrode. So how to do so? You have different uh, parameters. Obviously, you have the main ones, so meaning the porosity, the uh, active material rate ratio, and its uh, density. You can also play with the uh, radius. So if you want a normalized distribution between two different radius, so having the same uh, probability to get, if you say two to four micrometer, you will have the same probability to get two, three, or four. And obviously, your this dimension of your box as well as the resolution, so the number of micrometer per uh, pixels. So the finer it is, the longer it takes 
to generate, obviously. Like I was showing in the slide, you can access and control your common binder domain and morphology. So the, like it says in the tooltip, the closer it is to zero, the more film-like it will be. The closer it will be to one, the more cluster-like. And there is some other parameters. So alpha, it's something you, you should not really concern about. It's mainly how close from the border your active material can be. So, because as you can notice here, we are applying uh, we are applying what we call periodic boundary conditions. So I don't know because of the simulation is a bit laggy. But for instance, if you take this sphere that is intersecting the uh, border of the box, you can see that we put the same here in order to have a really representative volume. So that's what we call a, um, periodic boundary conditions. So, so with this parameter, you can control if you wanted to have your sphere anyway. So even if it's intersecting your box, or if you don't, you can play a bit with this parameter. It's not something so in important. Then this is the overlap between active material particles. So with that, you can tune how much contact you have between your particles. So it's quite interesting. And if you want something more advanced and more refined for your particle size distribution, you have this tool, so advanced particle size distribution, which will, if it's not too slow, open this dialog box here. Maybe you have five minutes left. OK. Uh, so how is it? OK, it's on the way. I don't know why my computer is a bit slow during my presentation. It's always best timing. Uh, so here you can have, have access to different experimental uh, results. So here, the NMC333 particle size distribution, or also the uh, spherical graphite distribution. But if you want, you can also use more uh, refined and custom approach, which is the uh, you can create your own Gaussian distribution. So for instance, you can select your couple of values, and it will generate your personal particle size distribution. So let's say if you don't want particles that are too small, you will say my minimum radius will be three. It will take your same part, same distribution, but have a set of at three. So you can play a bit around this uh, around this parameter. So to really fine, finely tune the uh, particle size distribution you want. If you want something more a peak a distribution which is less broad, you can obviously reduce this uh, standard deviation. I'm trying to have it as fine as possible. So here you see it really reduces the uh, range. So I think it should be done soon. So okay, just for time's sake, I have the exact same one here with the animation already done. So don't mind if I just show you that one, but it's exactly the same procedure that was followed. And as you can see, the other one just uh, just finished also. So if we go at time equal zero, you see that you have high concentration at the top, and then it will slowly diffuse through your electrode during your um, simulation time. So it's nothing too fancy. You can see also that the unconnected parts are not filled with electrolyte because they're not connected to the top. So you have some kind of dead electrolyte pores. But this is just to highlight how easy and fast it is to actually get results from Innov through a console or any, any other software you might use. So I will now start to go back quickly to the uh, slides. So I had some couples of examples to show you to highlight what, how you can use Comsol uh, and Innov link. So I performed a study of the SCI formation, which is uh, the same topic that um, Arno Flutes talked about before. So here I just used two different uh, structures. Here is our ge generated through a geodict to have ellipsoidal and spherical, and through a SCI formation at silver 20 followed by a chart at 1C, we could see that there was differences. Oh, my bad. Differences in terms of um, lithiation process. So here I have the firstly the charge, the discharge, sorry. 
So just based on the uh, structure of your uh, of your active material, you have much heterogeneities in the ellipsoidal electrode, but also during these, the will be even more uh, obvious, and it will even be less. Uh, it will provide even less capacity this ellipsoidal through this uh, SCI formation process. And then re really quickly, because of the time constraint, I will go through an example of um, 3D cell, full cell electrode discharge at 1C, just to show that it allows you really state of the art and even more simulations, this tool. Here are just generated, so these two electrodes at 1C discharge, so you got 140 for an MC, so it's 140 million per per grams. So it's kind of what you would expect at an experimental level. Here is the end of discharge profile of your state of lithiation. So the more, lith the more lithium you have inside, so more red it is. So you can see high uh, gradient because of the big particles in, uh, in graphite, whereas in an MC you have less gradients because they are particularly smaller. A short video to illustrate this um, lithiation process. I can really see how it is um, solid lithium li limited, this uh, delithiation de process at the graphite electrode. But the cool thing is you can also, if you mesh all the particles as individual particles, you can also extract a lot of cool parameters and observables at individual uh, level. So here's the case for graphite particles. You can see you have the lithiation profile. So like I said before, you have lithiation diffusion limited because of the uh, size of your particles. And if you have a look at the environment, here you have also another active material particles that are covering the surface, preventing the lithiation to be uh, delithiated. And also, it will create a non-homogeneous distribution because since the particles are spherical, you might expect spherical uh, gradient, I mean spherical distribution inside, but it's not the case because of this uh, environment of your particles. So yeah, it's really the um, strength of this simulation in 3D to capture this uh, impact, like Arnulf, Arnulf Lotz was saying about this uh, CBD uh, location in uh, active material for the SCI generation. And okay, yeah, you can also extract this uh, cool plot that I uh, copied from uh, the latest paper of uh, the team of Paul Schering, where you can have the uh, particle lithiation with the size of each particle. And you can see that the closer you go to the uh, separator, somehow you see an increase of state of lithiation, which might imply that you have uh, ionic transport limiting system limited system and if we uh, shortly check the positive electrode the nmc electrode indeed you have a strong gradient of electrolytes with much more electrolytes at the top versus the bottom of your electrode which is quite depleted in lithium ion so which might explain why you have more lithiation at the top versus at the bottom so yeah basically what i was saying and yeah you with this tool enough really allows you to have a strong uh, strong basis to uh, build state-of-the-art experiments and simulations. So to conclu conclude, I showed the first release of the Enough app, which is accessible freely to the artistic website. It's easy and free the approach to generate and mesh your electrodes, also with explicit CBD, which is quite important. So yeah, with I uh, showcased the uh, Enough and console uh, workflow. And I showed the application you might have with full cell or SCI formation, for instance, thanks to this app. And as perspectives, I would like to add a few functionalities to Innov, obviously based on feedback, since it's the first time it's released to the public. And finally, improve the graphics interface because it's the first uh, version. And obviously, I'm not an expert, so I would like to improve it as much as I can. So with that, I thank you for your attention. I thank also all the colleagues that were part of this uh, work. And now we'll, for the time remaining, trying to answer to your questions. 
Thank you very much, Mehdi, for the, the great uh, the great presentation. So I, I, I'm very proud of the artistic team. So all of you, you are doing really, really, really great job. So Mehdi is uh, well, he's ending PhD. So he he asked me to advertise that he's uh, well, he's uh, able for any opportunity, you know. <laughs> So yeah, I mean, he's a, a brilliant element as you, as you could uh, appreciate in, in his presentation today. So um, do we have some questions, Fernando? Yes, indeed, we have some questions. So uh, Mehdi here, Rubayat Mahbud asks you, can we change the PSD of active material for ASSP? Yeah. I didn't mention it, but it's exactly the same. Also, it's a battery, all, all that we changes. I, I don't know why it's so slow, my computer today. But it will allows you to input some void, so some actual void, not electrolyte field void, but an mm, additional phase. But it's the only thing it will add. It will otherwise will be the same procedure. So obviously, we will be able to uh, to finally tune also and choose or import. You can also, I didn't mention it, but you can also uh, import your particle size distribution following the uh, recommendation in the uh, documentation, obviously. But you can, uh, yeah, it's possible. Short answer, yes, it's possible. Good. Here we have another question from Abigail Rosenblit, who asks, I don't know if I missed this, but what about console's own meshes? what would be the main advantages of meshing with inop compared to the meshing with console so yeah it's true i didn't mention the meshes from console <clears throat> the the main advantages would be that if it's made by the, by the by the software obviously it will be way faster to solve because it's he made it so it will be optimized for his uh, solver so that would be my guess and also you will have access to way more functionalities. I know for instance that console has a dynamic mesh function that is not available if you use an imported one. So for sure there is even more functionalities like this one. But the down part is that if you want to create mesh in console, you will need to import uh, your geometry inside. And this has been quite tricky for us to do because you could either do it through STL files, but it's not optimal because you have always some issues with one, for instance, one phases that goes to infinity or when importing really fine meshes. Maybe it's, it's if you want to build your own geometry inside or import um, simple geometries, it's maybe doable and preferable to do so. But if you want really a fine geometry with complex and different phases, I would highly recommend to use uh, imported meshes rather than the one made by console because it's quite complicated to import your geometry inside console. Actually, we try to generate spheres inside because for manufacturing simulations, it's just spheres. But there is so much spheres that even console cannot keep up with it. So that's why we recommend importing. Thank you for your answer. Here we have another question coming from Shavon Gutam, who asks, in PSD, can you make bimodal distributions? So you, you can't from the um, Gaussian tool, but you can import your, so if you can build your bimodal distribution by yourself and then put it in the format, uh, adequate format for importation, then you will be able to have your bimodal distribution. Great. So. This, I mean, as I, I mentioned at the beginning, so this is a milestone of the project, okay? So it's one of the tools that we are releasing this week. So Innov, who actually was the, the, it's a very important tool because it allowed us to import the structures generating from the manufacturing simulations in electrochemical models, right? Because once again, artistic, so what we intend to do is to develop a complete digital twin of the manufacturing process from the manufacturing of electrodes to the electrochemical performance. So then the contribution of Medi here was, was crucial to achieve uh, to achieve this goal. And now we are releasing this tool for everyone for free free use. So at your question, maybe before moving to the next speaker. Yes. Uh, here yep. we have a question from Sayed Atif Perves, a technical one. Do we need fast computers, higher RAM processors, etc., to work with these simulations? What's good with this uh, enough tool is that you can Fine, you can change the resolution of your mesh. So if you want something more coarse or more fine, 
to really fit with your uh, computational resources. But obviously, you will uh, have uh, less qualitative results if you use coarser mesh. But you can really finely tune it. But for instance, I'm working here with a 64 gigabyte RAM computer. Comsol is mainly based on uh, RAM, or as far as I know. And it works, it's fine for meshes up to maybe five or six hundred thousand elements. But if you want to go something finer, which is the state of the art, you will need really high, uh, higher computational resources. Okay, thank you so much okay. for your answer, Mary. There, is, there are more questions arriving. So sorry, mm -hmm. Donald, so we are going to start with you. We are uh, five minutes late, so we give us uh, two minutes more, if you don't mind. Uh, sure. Welcome, welcome, Donald, eh, to, the, to the webinar series. So there is okay. a question from Rakesh, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, he says, um, can you use lithium ion battery interface in console instead of transport of diluted species? What is the limitation of using lithium ion battery physics interface, if any? Yeah, actually, in, the, in this uh, little simulation, I just wanted to show the uh, really simple one uh, for it to be fast. But obviously, I'm using this um, lithium ion battery uh, physics interface, coupled, however, with this uh, transport of diluted species, as you can see here. Because in the, uh, as far as I know, maybe it has been patched in, uh, improved in its latest release. But in the one we are, in, I was used to use these two different uh, tools because the transport of diluted species allow me to to actually model the diffusion of lithium inside the active material, because if you were to do it inside this lithium uh, ion uh, module, it will not be, it will be more awkward from what I, under, I remembered. If, yeah, there, was, there was no way to actually have a Fikian diffusion inside your lithium ion module. That's why I'm using, uh, here I only use this transport diluted, but in reality I use the two. Great, Mehdi. Well, thank you very much. There are more questions waiting for you in the chat. 